Look at this badass deck of cards that I bought, guys. I was actually in San Diego. I went to James Coffee Co. If you guys watch Peter McKinnon, you probably heard of him talking about James Coffee Co. or seen him wearing their merch. And when you go to their San Diego location, you'll see that they have a bunch of different shops inside of their shop. And there's one called Art of Play. And when you go to Art of Play, they have a bunch of different puzzles and decks of cards that you can choose from. And one of the decks that I purchased was a collaboration they did with Sam Larson, which is one of my favorite um, artists on Instagram. And it's so sick, look at this. Like, come on, look how clean this deck looks. This is a Smokey the Bear deck, which is really cool. I live in Southern California, so I'm right next to Big Bear and all that. So anyway, I had to get this deck. I have a few that I purchased though, but this is my favorite one. And I'm learning some magic tricks. It's a fun little hobby that I'm doing. Maybe I'll show you guys some magic tricks as soon as I learn them. But anyway, today I'm gonna show you guys how to create a t-shirt design in Photoshop. We're going for the spray paint effect, and I'm gonna be using Nike's branding for this video, but uh, don't copy Nike, okay? This is for demonstration purposes. Again, this is just to teach you guys different techniques of designing that you can apply with your own work. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial in Photoshop. Let's get it. Usually I'll pre-record a design and then I'll kind of walk you guys through how I did it. But in this one, I wanted to get a little bit more in depth with it. I hope you guys enjoy it. The first thing I want to go into is the document setup. A lot of you have questions about it. Now, the reason why I use RGB versus CMYK color space is because I simply like RGB color space more and it's more widely accepted. The phone that you have in your hand probably watching this video is RGB color space and uh, obviously everything on the internet is RGB color space as well. Now let's pretend you're printing something on a Canon printer or something like that. CMYK might be the best option for you, especially if you're printing something like a brochure, a flyer, whatever. With screen printers, a lot of the times they convert colors to something called spot colors or Pantone colors anyway. So working in RGB or CMYK really is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. So I wouldn't focus too much on that. Anyway, uh, the first thing I want to do is actually do command N on my keyboard. And what that does is it actually pops up this new document dialog box. And what we want to do is actually make sure we have a 14 by 16 inch document at 300 DPI resolution. This is super important because we want to make sure we have the most quality possible, the most resolution possible. And besides that, um, you can change the background contents, which is the background color to any color you want. This is pretty much the shirt color. So make sure you're selecting the shirt color right here. So if you're designing for a black shirt, just select black. So your canvas is the right color and your design turns out the way you want it. And that's pretty much it. And then you can hit that big create button. And this is basically what it's going to look like. This is the document. And this is the design that I'm going to be teaching you guys how to do today. Really, really simple. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. I'm gonna go to the internet first and show you guys what I have popped up here. So this says Nike Swoosh logo, and I just typed that in and I found this Nike logo. It's probably better to find a PNG version, but this one worked for me. So I'm gonna copy this over. So I'm just right clicking on it, copying image, and I'm gonna paste this in place. So I have the Nike logo and we can kind of uh, just name that whatever we want, but I'm gonna name it Nike logo and we could hide that. And I'm also gonna hide group two, which is my first design. So I'm gonna title that too, just so we can keep everything organized and our first design this is our reference right so let's go ahead and recreate this so the first thing I want to do is hit T on my keyboard and that's gonna to go to the type tool I also want to go down to the bottom left here if you focus your eyes to this panel on the bottom here you see two colors you see a foreground color and a background color now the foreground color is going to be um, the one that we're focused on so we want to make sure that is white for now and I just want to type out Nike I want to make sure this isn't so spaced out so I'm gonna hold uh, option or you can hold alt on a PC and just tab over to the left so I'm using the left arrow keys and I want to go about right there and then we can also change the size of this in points so I'm gonna go up to the double T's up here you could change the font size with that and we're gonna make this fairly big so now what we could do is for the first logo, we're gonna have it kind of just solid, right? But for the second logo, I'm gonna make it a stroke. So there's a few ways that I can go about duplicating this. I can do Command J while selecting the Nike uh, layer, or I could just click and drag holding an Alt or Option and then let go and that will also duplicate it. So those are two ways you can duplicate something really fast in Photoshop. And on the second one, which is a copy that we just created, I wanna take the fill all the way down to zero. What this is going to do is make the font completely disappear. We need to add that back obviously, but I'm gonna do this in the form of a stroke. So I wanna to go to FX and then add a stroke and we wanna make sure the stroke is white so we can actually see it. And we don't want this to be too thick, but I actually think this is pretty good and I wanna align it to the inside and that's simply so everything lines up on the left and right sides. If I bring a ruler over and zoom in on it, you can see that everything is aligned. Now, if I change the stroke to the outside, look what happens, watch this. See what happens, now everything's not aligned. If you really wanna be picky, you can sharpen these corners, which I do recommend. It would just give you a way nicer look, but I don't really care because the effect we're doing is going to be like a spray paint effect. So I don't really think it needs to 
be sharp on the inside if that makes sense because obviously they're rounded and not sharp so that's just something to note but for this uh, design I don't think it needs it and we're looking pretty good so what I want to do is actually duplicate one more time and I'm gonna bring it up to the top this time I want to make sure the spacing is pretty much the same and then from here I actually want to rasterize this layer style and I'm gonna move it down to about right here and I want to take a rectangle marquee tool and just cut off the top I don't even care if I'm working destructively in this case because that's kind of the effect I'm going for anyway bottom layer I'm also going to rasterize this layer style and bring this up just like this and we're gonna cut this off as well and then we could take that solid fill layer bring that down a little bit and I just want to cut off a little bit from the bottom so it's just kind of random you know we're not we're just doing some random stuff with this um, we're cutting it in random spots to create this kind of broken up look and that's the look that I'm going for for this particular design so I really like this the next thing I want to do is hit T on my keyboard one more time and just type out just do it which is Nike slogan just like that and we can even spread that out by holding an alt or option and hitting the right arrow key give it some nice spacing. We're gonna drag it to about right here. I just want the spacing to look nice. I wanna give it some breathing room, so I'm actually gonna move it down just a little bit more. And we're gonna take that Nike logo now, and we can do a few different things. We can invert it like this, which is fine, but either way, it's gonna have a black background, so I wanna take the magic wand tool and just quickly delete it. I'm not really caring too much about it being the sharpest image right now, because again, we're gonna add this effect to it, which gives it a spray paint effect. It's gonna help sell this effect even more, honestly, if it has a little bit of blur. The only thing we need to do now is actually take all of our layers, so I'm gonna go all the way to the very top layer, and I wanna go all the way to the bottom layer, and I'm gonna hold in shift, and select that bottom layer. So we're going all the way from the top layer to the bottom layer. You can do this vice versa. And then hit Command G on your keyboard, or I think it is Control on a PC. I could be wrong. And now you're gonna group everything together. You can name this whatever you want. So I have mine named Design. So what I wanna do now is actually hide the background, hit Command A on my keyboard. I wanna go up to Edit, Copy Merged, and then Shift Command V to paste that in place. And then I can hide everything. And as you can see, we have a duplicate copy. Only thing I need to do now is actually right click, make this a smart object and then take the blend mode and make it dissolve. So we're going from a normal blend mode to a dissolve blend mode, which is super important because if we don't do that, this effect won't work. When you make the blend mode dissolve, what it's gonna do is when you add a blur to this, it's going to give the edges this nice grainy look. And I'm gonna demonstrate that right now. So make sure you have a dissolve blend mode, go up to filter. We're gonna go all the way down to the blur gallery. We wanna use a filled blur for this one. Now the first point's going to be in the center of the design, which is perfect, but we do wanna take this little bar going around the circle and we wanna lower that a little bit. We just want a little bit of grain just so we can keep those edges nice and sharp. And now what you could do with this fill blur is uh, select multiple areas, okay? So we're gonna select one on the corner here and we can actually blur uh, separate areas. So we're gonna blur this one a lot. We're gonna go to uh, the right, and it's okay if you're off the artboard. So as you can see, we're blurring just that corner, and we could do this for pretty much any spot we want. You can blur this as much as you want, but I recommend you don't go too crazy with it because you can also ruin the design. And I think this corner right here needs to be blurred a little bit more. You can make as many points as you want, but again, um, just try not to go too crazy with this effect because it can easily ruin your design. It's one of those effects that if it's done too much, it can honestly distort the design and uh, make it less legible, I guess you can say, but I mean, have fun with it, you know? All you have to do is actually hit OK, and it's going to apply this effect. And just like that, you have this spray paint effect on the corners. And now if you wanted to, you could change the color of it by adding a color overlay, but I'm actually going to take it a step further. What I wanna do is actually add a layer mask to this. And now I'm gonna take one of my texture brushes, and we are going to keep the flow at 100% and keep the opacity at 100%. And then I'm just gonna click once on top of the design while selecting that layer mask and it's going to apply this effect. And now we have a design that looks like this. And again, if you wanna add color to this, just add a quick color overlay and you can change the color just like that. And because we have that texture on a layer mask, it's not going to disappear, which is nice. I like this color a lot. It's like a seafoam green or like a tillish color. And this is really nice. And let's go ahead and mock this up and see what it looks like. So I'm gonna use one of my mocks and you guys can buy this mock on my website right now. And with my mock-up, all you have to do is just change the blend mode to screen and it looks like it's on the shirt. And it's as simple as that. So now we have two different versions of this design. So I already did this one off camera. Either one looks cool to me, but um, I actually kind of prefer the first one to be honest with you guys, but that's pretty much it guys. That is Merch Design episode 24, out the door. It is over with, I know I'm sorry guys, sad day. But if you liked the video, smash that thumbs up button for me and uh, make sure you guys are subscribed. We're almost at 200K, which is insane. I'm gonna do my best to keep busting these videos out for you guys. We need to grow the views, we need to grow the community. And to do that, 
I need your guys' help. So um, yeah, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for the support. Subscribe, I have a Discord link in the description of this video and you guys can follow me on my socials as well. And I have a bunch of affiliate links, all that good stuff. So I guess this is uh, where we depart, but I will catch you guys in the next video. Keep creating, keep being awesome. Peace. Oh, <laughs>